It's like while I agree with you that there are some issues to be tackled within certain views of politics, and there are some people who take things too far that don't understand how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm listening. That, but I don't think that's the same thing as saying we we should not be standing behind these people. I think we can admit that the mass movement will be changed. But I don't think that means we shouldn't be wholeheartedly putting our hands behind resistance from Palestine. Right. So do you want me to reply to that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Firstly, I think that I think that you're naive. Uh, let me finish. I think that you're naive in your understanding of what Islam requires in its treatment of Christians. If you look at the commentary, and we're about to do it after I've given you a right to reply, if you look at the commentary of Surah 929, given by classical Muslim scholars. I'm a Shia. Let, let, uh, well, okay, fine, fine. I mean, that does change things. It does change things. Fair enough. I didn't realize you were a Shia. But if, and so, if you look at Sharia law, as practiced by the Iranian state, yeah. Christians don't have equal rights with Muslims. I'll give you an example. So in Iran, if a Christian man and a Christian woman are in relationship, and, and I know three Christians personally that are all in relationships with Muslim women, in, under Iranian law, yeah. that marriage is illegal. Yeah. Right. But if a Muslim man is in a relationship with a Christian woman, that marriage can be legal. Let me finish. So here's my example. I'm, I'm landing now. I'm landing now. So in that example, what we see is that Christians do not have equal rights with Muslims under Islamic law. Do you agree with the law or do you condemn the law? No, no, I agree with that. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. No, 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 hold on, because we can look to the UK. Can I in the UK have my four wives? Can I have four wives under the UK, legal UK four wives? No, I can't have full my full Islamic right to wives under the legal system. I can have the nikah. I can't have the four legal wives under the system. I can't also just slaughter a goat for Eid by myself. I can't do these certain things too. There are certain things within any law of the land you're not going to be able to do. I don't think Christian, Muslim, Christian women not being able to date Muslim men or things. I don't think that's like a real... I mean, that's Islam. That's the, that's the teachings. That's like saying with anything within the religion. Okay, so let me reply to your point. Right, it's right. very well made. Yeah. But what you've missed is that under a law like that, a Christian cannot have four wives either. Yeah. No one can have four wives. In other words, what I'm saying to you is that Christians, according to the Old Testament, and, and, and we, we inherit that philosophy, believe in a principle of equality under the law. In other words, I believe that there should be one law for everyone. But let me finish. I didn't interrupt you. Sorry, sorry. But under Sharia law, mm -hmm. there's one set of laws for Christians mm -hmm. and another set of laws for Muslims. Yeah. And these laws treat them differently. Let me give you another example. Let me give you another example. Right. In Iran, yeah. if a Christian wants to become a Muslim, that's yeah. legal. Yeah. But if a Muslim wants to become a Christian, that is illegal. Yeah, there right. are hangings of Christians mm -hmm. that are happening in Iran. Yeah. And therefore, once again, we see that Christians are not under equal treatment under the law. So your argument is not valid because I'm, or, or rather, I am just saying to you that Christianity is better because in Christianity, you would be governed by the same law that governs me and they'd be identical. But if you had your way, I would be trapped by a separate set of laws than how you would be trapped that would place me at a disadvantage. See, that just brings to the question of, is this idea that we should all have such a, a liberal world government really the thing that we need? Because as you can see, the Western philosophical tradition, I'm sure you're familiar, they start privileging epistemology over metaphysics. They go away. We get atheism, we get this existentialism. And what has this done for the majority of Me and you both believe there are certain conditions to go to a place called heaven, right? Yeah. Now, has this wave of atheism, this wave of liberalism, this freedom, has it, has it opened the doors for more salvation or are more people than ever rejecting a religion and going to hell? Right. So your first mistake is thinking that I'm a liberal. I'm not a liberal. My politics aren't liberal. All right, go on, give me now, a... Now, so, so I don't believe in the Enlightenment settlement. Okay. I don't believe that Christians should get in bed with liberalism. Okay. 
right? Because a liberal, liberalism is allowing people who support what I would call toxic values and toxic beliefs, mm -hmm. like the reintroduction of slavery, like the idea of child marriage, yeah. like the idea of discrimination on the basis of religion and creating two kinds of laws, um, like wiping out anyone who's not a Jew, a Christian or a Muslim. Those kinds of toxic values are tolerated by liberalism. Yeah. I would not tolerate them. Okay. I would deal with them, right? And the reason why I would deal with them is whether a Christian advocates for them or a Jew advocates for them or a Muslim advocates for them, they just are abhorrent values. So don't make me mistake me for a liberal. Okay. Now, so, but, but you haven't, all you've actually done is agree that, that we should discriminate against Christians in the Middle East. I won't put it Do you, I feel like there's a... Should it, should it, if, it, if like I know Muslims who become Christians, yeah. personally, yeah. right, right? Should they be killed under an Islamic state? Yes. Right. Does the Quran say that there's no compulsion in religion? Yes. If you stick a gun to someone's head and say you're going to stay a Muslim, is that compelling them? You're not them? supposed to do that. No, no, <laughs> it, I'm using the metaphor. Like, but yeah, if you... Are, there is a difference of opinion though. So there is a type of murtad in which he cannot, his repentance cannot be accepted and there's a type who can. The type who was born a Muslim, his repentance can be accepted. The type who was who converted and then left it is a type of repentance. Right, but, but think logic. What's your name, bro? Luke. Luke, think logically. If I let you walk into a room yeah. and then say you can't leave and if you try to leave, I'll shoot you. Yeah. But you want to leave, yeah. right? Couple of questions. One, in your heart, have you already decided to leave? Yeah. In your heart, in some sense of imagination, have you already left? I suppose you could say it. Yeah. And if I put, a, if I say, if you leave this room, I'll shoot you, mm -hmm. am I compelling you to stay? I think so, but I think there's a... Now, gonna, go back to the, what's Allah's words on this? You see, this is the thing, though. When you're talking about morality, we're going to be, we're going to both be presupposing that our religious beliefs is, and our, from our old God is what's going to define what's moral. Yeah. So you can say you find it unlikable. No, no. We can't say we find it immoral because my morals are going to be based on the Quran. They're going to come from words. Right, but what I'm pointing out to you, right, is that, and, and, and when you come to accept the apostasy laws, is that based on Sahih al-Bukhari? Well, no, I'm Shia. Well, Sahih, no, Shia do accept some of Sahih al-Bukhari. Only, only stuff that's between both. Fair enough. So, so when Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim talk about the apostasy laws, you're not getting your view of apostasy no, laws from, from those hadiths. So Muslims have no agreement about where this idea is coming from. I'm sure we have some stuff on it, but it's just nothing. I haven't read the right. particular... Okay, I just want to point out to you that Muslims can't agree about their hadiths. Oh, we know that, yeah. yeah right. Cool. So now, coming back to the Quran, the Quran says, let there be no compulsion in religion. Is that true? Yes. Right. But you've already admitted that the apostasy law is a form of compulsion. Kind of. Can you see the contradiction? Kind of, but what I'm going to say Where, is... Where's my analogy of the room flawed? No, I don't think it's flawed. I think you're correct in saying if people want to leave, they're going to want to leave, regardless of whether you hold them there or not. But, but in apostasy laws, you will be holding lots of people but there. You've got to, with apostasy laws, to be executed for apostasy, you'd have to admit it openly to four people first. Yeah. You couldn't, you, you wouldn't just be like sitting in your house, being non-religious and they're going to... They're going to kick down the door. That's not going to happen. I can understand what you're saying, but also within any society, there are certain things that, hey, if they're against the law and no one sees you, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. You know, smoking, doing drugs is illegal. But as long as we do it behind closed doors, even in the parliament building, as long as no one sees them, it's okay. That's not okay. I mean, it's what they do though, right? I mean, okay, not in the, not in the moral sense, I just mean in the societal sense. Right. We get away with it. Mm. In the same regard, while I understand that there are harsh punishments, I also believe there is wiggle room. I believe there is a nice amount of wiggle room. Let me ask you this question. Yeah. If so, what you're so going on what you're saying, yeah. you would be happier if Muslims pretended to be Muslim in the mosque, yeah. pretended to be they Muslim at Ramadan, without actually being Muslim. No, that, they that, they that, wait, 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 right. But you're you're happier if people just pretend to be Muslim rather than be actually Muslim. No, what I'm saying is if they want to leave, but you know they want to be respectful and be chill and not, not say anything crazy and they just mind their business and have a general cultural garb, I think that's fine. I right, so, so, so just think what you've committed yourself to because of Islamic teaching. You've committed yourself to hypocrisy. What's hypocrisy, do you know? 
Yeah. What is hypocrisy? Saying one thing and doing the other. Exactly. So Islam has led you to the point where hypocrisy is preferable than, than sincerity. Maybe. Because, yes, exactly, not maybe, really. Maybe. Because you're defending hypocrisy. I'm moving because uh, the, the sun no, came no, right no, in my head. So I'm using your head as a shadow. <laughs> so my, my point to you is, Christianity has a better way for you. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. In other words, you say what you speak, you, you, you speak what you think and you think what you say, right? And that you you've act in a way that accords to what you believe. James in his epistle states that, he basically his epistle states, it's not what you say you believe, it's what you do that says what you believe. Yeah, yeah, so in other words, yeah. if you say that you're a Christian, but you don't do any Christian you, things. You my faith in my work. Yeah, exactly. So, so my point to you is, which do you think is better as a system? That which encourages sincerity or that which cultivates hypocrisy? I don't think it cultivates hypocrisy. I wouldn't say that. What I would say is there is there is going to be people who don't fit under the system that are going to flip, flip through the cracks, unfortunately. I will admit that. But I think that's true of any country that has a certain popular cultural thing or a religion. I think that's true when people fall outside the cracks. They get exiled. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a relatively true thing. I think that can happen even in Christian nations. I think that can happen in Jewish nations. I think this idea that it's just the Muslims who ostracize those who step out of the faith, I think that's going to be false, undoubtedly. I'll admit, in this lovely Western country, yeah, maybe we're a lot more peaceful about it. But I think I think if a lot of people had it their way, no one would believe in their religion that they think is true. So I think the main thing I'm going to really say to that is, I understand your point about what you're saying, but I'm just really saying. If people mind their business and they don't do outward haram, even upon leaving Islam, if they don't walk around saying, oh yeah, Allah is not real, or I don't believe in Muhammad anymore, which they don't what need to do. What did you learn to disrespect women? Oh no, I just got, I just, it's because she was shouting. You're shedding out Muhammad in Muhammad's head, that's how you treat yeah, women. Yeah, I lost my temper a little bit. You lost all. your temper, and that's I apologize. what you learned. I lost and my I temper right? as well. I'm gonna fuck By the way, you break your that's her husband. Yeah, oh, yeah and I said sorry. I'm sorry. That's not how you speak with I'm a just, woman. I would just she the said nothing. Before you jump in, you. this brother I'm insulted sorry. his wife. I am sorry. From next this brother I'm insulted his, his wife. Before you, before you jump in, what, what he, this man you insulted you his wife in, in front of him. So before you jump in, I'm just no, letting no, you know. No, 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 I'm just letting you know. I just lost my temper, I'm autistic, and there's lots of shouting. Give it respect to women. I will. I promise. I don't, I don't answer to my question. You are, for me, you are extremist Christian. You don't represent Christian. For all, majority of Christian, for you, is in heresy, and you, you believe, you believe that Israel should stay in Palestine with the temper, uh, uh, for sure. So destroyed, destroyed Masjid Aqsa. This is apocalyptic. So, 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 apocalyptic vision. So, so, the apocalypse. So, yeah. uh, we, 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 we were just having a conversation. Thing. There is, there is, no, no, hold on one second. Oh, sir, sir, sir. Uh, I'm happy to talk to you. Yeah. Let me finish talking to him and then me and you can have a conversation. Okay, let me talk to him and then I'll talk to you. Peace with you, brother. Go on. So, my point to you is, Luke, right? Look where Islam has got you, right? Islam has got you to the point where you're defending hypocrisy, where you're defending apartheid, uh, treating that. people uh, by different sets of laws based on some characteristic. In the West, we know it by r racial apartheid, but Islam is a religious apartheid. Now, let me ask you this question. If the British government passed a law that said that if you do dawah, yeah. we're going to arrest you. Yeah. If you convert to Islam, we're going to kill you. Yeah. How would you describe those laws? Be honest. I'll be honest, a little bit oppressive. Right. And would you object to those laws? Yeah, but only once again, because this is where the question, and we really need to discuss philosophy more than anything, because what we're going to come down to the question is, whose God exists and who's got the moral high ground, essentially. But the thing is, our conscience allows us to learn truth, right? Yeah. So if we meet something that our conscience kicks against, mm -hmm. whilst our conscience can't decide the matter solely on its own, yeah. we should factor in what our conscience is saying. Because oh, God agree. created our conscience. Okay. Me and you could argue about which book is true. Yeah. But we can't argue about the fact that God created our conscience. That's true. And our instinct is that our instinct is to believe that people should treat us justly. Mm -hmm. Which means that God 
has put into our conscience the idea that we should treat others justly. I agree. Because of the law of reciprocation. I agree. Like when you apologize to that woman, yeah. I apologize to you. Good Do you see my point? So, so my point is to you, bro, is that when you say to me that I don't want someone to pass those laws against Christian, sorry, against Muslims, you should recognize that your conscience is telling you that you shouldn't want those laws to be passed against Christians. And if some other force, some other authority or, or influence is making you go against your conscience, then you should recognize that that isn't from God. So it's a question of epistemology. You wanted a philosophical yeah, conversation, you've got one. No, I'm glad, I'm glad. I mean, look, this is the thing. Our moral intuitions can say a lot of things. Yeah. But it doesn't make them all true. Our seems are not always true. So what I could see, it could seem to me that X, Y, Z feels immoral. It might not necessarily be so, vice versa. Like, for example, is it immoral to kill an ant? Uh, depends on the context. Just in general, if I see an ant, is it wrong if I just squish it? Yes, but it's not a terrible wrong. It's not a terrible wrong. It not really, really matter about anything, but you still feel like it's really wrong. You feel bad, like killing a spider. You feel really bad about it, but it's not a real... Uh, it's a evil. wrong, but it's not a terrible it's not wrong. It's a terrible evil, right? So intuitions aren't going to always justify... But, but my point to you is that if you recognise that, that if, if anyone passed these laws against Muslims, that that would be unjust, then your conscience has allowed you to see what justice looks like. And justice is from God. Yeah. Right. So, it, your, and God has given you a conscience so that you can find justice. Yeah. Right. So, if your conscience tells you that if someone does this to the Muslims, it's wrong, then you have identified what justice looks like. And therefore. I agree. You got me there. Yes. You got me there. there you, you go, you there. see. I'm not dishonest. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, therefore, if you've identified what justice looks like, you should pursue that. And if pursuing that leads you away from this book and to another book, then you should follow that path, right? And, 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 and Islam contradicts that concept of justice. The Bible, remember when we were having this conversation, I said the same law for everybody from the beginning, right? So that means for me that refugees who just arrive here off the boat should be entitled to all the same rights as a citizen. Okay, I agree with that. From the beginning. I agree, yeah. Right? Yeah. But they're also subject to all the same expectations okay, I can agree. from the beginning. I can agree. Right. That means that I can only have one wife. You can only have one wife. Remember, justice points towards a Christian faith because Islam teaches against justice, which your conscience has allowed you to identify. Does that make sense? Yeah. So my point to you, Luke, is that you have, yeah, no offense, I don't know the circumstances of your conversion to Islam, right? I don't know. But, okay, but my point is you took a philosophical misstep. That's understandable, everyone does, right? But now that you've seen that you took a philosophical misstep, you owe it to yourself to correct. Because standing on the truth is more important than being a Muslim, right? Yeah. Right. So I've, I've identified for you a very good, solid reason mm -hmm. to take a step back from Islam. And I've also, in that same argument, given you a very concrete step to step towards Christianity. Yeah, do you see it? I do see it, yeah. Are you, are you, are you, are you, are you ready to follow that through to its logical conclusion now, or do you want time to think about it? What time to think about it, because it still, it still, it still comes down to the question of, if Islam is true, then all the moral propositions are true, regardless of how I feel about it. Right. And vice versa for Christianity. Yeah. And we, we gave you a reason to think that out. So your conscience is from God. The two books are in dispute. Yeah. I say the Quran is false, you say the Bible is false. But what we both agree upon is that our conscience is from God. Mm -hmm. Right? And our conscience is God's tool to help us delineate justice from injustice. Yeah. So when we encounter an injustice against ourselves, we encounter an injustice against anyone. See, look. If it were up to me, if it was my ishtihad, okay, if it was my ishtihad, yeah. there's one important ayat in the Quran, which yeah. I think people ignore a lot. I'm, which, let's go to it. Me, 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 I'm a bit of a Gnostic guy. I, I, like, I like to look to the inner things, less so the, yeah, the Sharia yeah. is... Where am I going? Uh, I think... Oh, I don't remember the ayat. Alright, just that, tell it then. But it's where it says that between the Jews and the Christians and the Muslims, we should raise to do good deeds. Yeah. Afterwards, Allah will let us know about different. Okay, I know what you're talking about. So for me, if I were to make ishtihad, if it's yeah. up to me on, on the Sharia, I would take that into heavy account. 
That's what right. I would say. Because I think it's complicated. But yeah. I, I don't think it's as simple as the outer Right, law. But, but think about the logic of that argument, right? Shall we go to the verse? Yeah? yeah. Uh, it might take us a moment to find it. I think it's in Surah and Masa. It might be. Surah 5, isn't it? Surah Maida, yeah. If you want to five. Let's go there. Surah 5, I think, is it 47 to 48? Right, because the thing is, if, if, you're gonna, if you're really gonna take this passage seriously, there's nothing stopping you from becoming a Christian. I'm gonna show you, right? Okay, right, listen to it. Listen, we'll read the whole passage, right? So I'm gonna give you a Quranic reason why you can become a Christian. Okay, so the passage goes this. To thee we sent the scripture in truth, confirming the scripture that came before it. So that's to Muhammad, we sent the Quran, confirming yep. the Torah and the Injil, yeah? Yep. Right? Um, before it, and guarding it in safety. So judge between them by what Allah has revealed. So in other words, make your judgments uh, amongst the Jews, because this is when he was in Medina, yeah. based upon the Quran or the Torah, yeah. right? Um, and it goes on and follow not their vain desires. So like you got to stick to the scriptures, not what you want. Yeah. Diverging from the truth that have come to thee, the, the truth that has come to thee. Listen to the next bit. To each among you, that's the Jews and the Muslims at this point, yeah. this is in Medina. To each amongst you, um, to each amongst you have we prescribed a law, yeah. an open way. If Allah had so willed, would have made you one. Yeah, let's go. Keep going. If Allah had so willed, He would have made you one, a single people, one ummah. Yeah. Right. But His plan is to test you in what He hath given you. So strive as a race in all virtues. Yeah. The goal of you all is to Allah. That's all. Are Jews, Christians, Muslims. Yeah. yeah. It is he that will show you the truth of the matters in which he disputes. So if you take that passage seriously, yeah. the Quran has affirmed that Christianity is the truth. I don't disagree. See, this is what I'm saying. It's right, now hold on one second. Christianity is the truth, and I have shown to you that Christianity is a better way to find virtue. As someone who takes Allah's command seriously, you should follow the course of the race that leads you to most virtue quickest. Yeah. And that means following your conscience. Yeah. That means leaving Islam and becoming a Christian, which is not rejecting Allah. It's being on the quicker path to virtue because Allah said Christianity, Judaism and Islam are all true. Mm -hmm. Do you get the argument? I do get the argument. Yeah? Now that's using the passage you brought up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like I'm saying, so for me, there's a, how do I put it, like an inner reality. So Go on, so yeah. The Sharia, that's the outer thing. It's a very Sufi idea, the outer and the inner. Right? Yeah. So for me, I don't think we need to treat people of the book in the way we do. I don't think we need to be as harsh as we are. I think some, I think Muslims are a bit harsh. I will admit, I will admit. Why? But their harshness is coming from Islamic Sharia law. Think about it, think about it. Instinctively, do you want to own a slave? No. Right, but Sharia law permits you to own a slave. Instinctively, do you want to- So do one of the popes. Uh, the, so, no, like, like the, the thing is, papal bulls. right? When you look at those papal bulls and yeah. compare them to the teachings of the New Testament, they don't correspond. That's what I'm saying. Right, but Muhammad in the Quran permits slavery. Yeah, yeah. But right. that's in line with what he believes God is telling you. But you've got, uh, and I know he's not infallible. Not only when he's escathedra, the pope's infallible. But still, you've got a pope giving moral allowance to a form of slavery, which, as you admit, is not in the Bible. So Greed. Got, you know, you've got this great, important leader. And he's saying, yeah, it's fine to, you know, do this chapter. Well, but all that, all that shows is that there are good Christians and bad Christians. Yeah, but it's a Pope. Well, it's, again, there are, in, there are good Christians and bad Christians. Yeah, but it's a, I'm not talking about general opinion, it's the Pope, though. Again, just there are good Christians and bad Christians. It just, it's, so, in this case, the, the bad Christian is a Pope. There's been loads I, of bad Popes. Why does that have have to... you never learned about the bourgeois? The bourgeois? No, no, I'm familiar, but right? I mean, I don't like to say the Popes are some great evidence. But, but my point is, like, anything, rather so. than I could point to bad Imams, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? But that doesn't invalidate Shiism. I mean, it would be valid if there was a real critique of one of the top Imams. Right, but, 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 but my, my point to you is that, I mean, I've got moral critiques of Muhammad left, right and centre. From our books or from their books? Well, that's the point. They're mainly from, mainly from Sunni <laughs> books, to be <laughs> fair. Be, mainly we, from our, Sunni our books. Our prophet, yeah. Ali, is spotless in our tradition. Right. Well, Right, so I mean, but the the issue is, 
Would you say it's more virtuous not to own a slave or than to own a slave? Same as Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi said. It's more virtuous to free them. Right. So it's more virtuous not to own slaves, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Which is all we said. Which okay. Yeah. Did Jesus own a slave? No. Did Muhammad? Yes. Who's the more virtuous? Jesus. Right. So who's the better moral teacher to follow? I think they're both infallible, so... Hold on. We've just agreed that to not own a slave is more virtuous than to own a slave. Yeah. That Jesus didn't own a slave, but Muhammad did. Therefore, Jesus is more virtuous. You've just got to be consistent to your yeah, logic. You have to be consistent so, to your who is who is better? Who is better to follow? I still think Muhammad is better to follow. You still think so? Right. Let's let's have another uh, uh, a crack at this. Is it better to? Is it better? I mean, for instance, in Sharia, in in Shia position, did yeah. Muhammad marry Sophia? Yeah. And was that after the destruction of the Banu Quraysh? Yeah. And was that after she had seen her father and her mother and her children, like her, yeah, her family destroyed? Yeah, she loved the Prophet, right? right. Do you know what? Do you know what hostage syndrome is? Yeah, I know what Stockholm syndrome is. But Stockholm, yeah. I mean, claiming that is just a. Uh, I can see why one would make that claim, but it's one of those historical claims that. Can't but be but verified. think like a logic, Luke. Luke, you strike me as an intelligent, thinking human being, mm -hmm. right? If your family has just been destroyed, just use yourself, yeah. right? If your enemy has just destroyed your family and take you prisoner, are you gonna love them? No. Right. But let's say that you're their prisoner for 20 years. Do you think you might love them then? Probably. Right. So Sophia, and any account of her loving the prophet, was immediately out of necessity because her life depended on it. I think it was the other way around. I mean, the or, or, but, but no, or, or it was because she was a hostage for her entire life with no hope of escape. Well, no, we would say that because the thing about Sophia is, is that she was married because she was vulnerable, not because not because she was like being forced to. Well, I don't I don't know what the Shia texts say, but according well, to the we say that she wanted to marry the Prophet. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But the thing is, you've got you've got to recognise, bro, that like people people back in those days, women, particularly women, you see this in the Crusades, yeah. right? When the caravan of the Crusaders looked like it was going to get overrun. The women were so terrified of just being destroyed, yeah. murdered, yeah. that they would beautify themselves in the hope that they could be taken as a slave mm -hmm. because their fear of death, right? Death is a power, the fear of death is a powerful thing. It makes people do crazy stuff, I agree. right? But those women weren't happy to be taken as slaves, no, but I their agree. choice was slavery or death. Yeah. Sophia's position was slavery, a sex slave to a nobody, or a sex slave to Muhammad the Prophet. Like, either way, she's going to be someone's sex slave. I don't think she was a sex slave. Her choice was sex slavery or marriage to the Prophet. I think it's easy to, to paint things out in this regard. I don't know if it's all quite like that. Okay, I don't know if what the Shia sources say, but in the Sunni sources, it says that someone guarded the tent yeah, we don't, I don't know any of that. All right. But my point, my point to you is, Luke, which I, I find that repugnant behavior. Like, if someone did that to your mother, it yeah. should be condemned. Yeah. Right, yes, you said, yes. I don't believe that's what's happening in that but, scenario. But, well, 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 I mean, you're going to have to provide the evidence to say otherwise. I mean, our reason is just going to be, once again, you're right in the fact that she had to get married. Women are viewed as contingent upon men, but I mean, that's the same for Christianity. No woman is complete. And a whole, and that that's actually married. not true in the Christian faith. Mm, well, Augustine says that women are not the image of God, but only the image of God when married. That's in on the Trinity. Augustine believed. Well, hold on a second. Aquinas. Let me correct you. Go ahead, go ahead. Both Augustine and Aquinas believed in the idea of celibate females. Yeah. Which means that, oh, uh, from the Christian perspective, they are complete as women, so independent why does of Augustine men. Augustine say that then. Right, but the image of God question, he's, he's sort of repeating after Paul. Yeah. This yeah. idea that man is the image of God and women is taken from the rib and the likeness of man. Yeah. Right? The, he's, he's working within that, in that tautology, he's working within that paradigm. Yeah. But that isn't the same, because it, bearing in mind in Genesis, it says that male and, in the image of God, he created them male and female, sorry, Male and female, he created them in the image of God, he created them. Mm -hmm. So the image of God is bore by both male and female. That's opposite what you just said though. No, Paul is not contradicting 
It's not contradicting well, one Genesis. Thing women are, yeah. one thing women are yeah. not. Right, let, no, let me, let me finish. The, if, if women are the image of men and men are the image of God, what, are the, what is the image of women? Well, they're only the image of God when under the Do the logic. Household. I can tell you can think logically. Yeah, if I men are the argument. image of God no, no, and argument. women are the image of men, what is the image of woman? Yeah, once again, I get your argument. You're not answering the question. I get, no, I'm agreeing with your argument, but, but Augustine verbatim says they are not the image of God unless they are joined to a man and with him is the head only then. Then are the Augustine image is of God. just wrong. All right. All right. Cool. Yeah, you know, we're not, we're not tied to Augustine. If what about Aquinas that says women are misbegotten? We're, we're, we're tied, we're tied to the scriptures. Yeah. And the scriptures teach that man and woman are made in the image of God. That man is made in the image of God and that woman is made in the image of man. Mm -hmm. If man is made in the image of God and woman are made in the image of man, the image of woman is God. To, Where is my look? Why, why is the most one of the most important church fathers saying the opposite? All all church fathers get something wrong, bro. Everybody accepts there, that. There's, there's multiple Tertullian thinks they're the reason. Tertullian's not a church father. Try he, again. He is amazing. No, he I isn't. Know, I know you guys. No, he isn't. No, he out. isn't. He, he is not a church father. He's a church writer. He's not a okay. considered a church father. Sure, sure. He's sure. considered a heretic. I know. And you, I know that. Right. So, so, so he's not a church again. father. Exactly. So there you go. It doesn't mean there's any Just because someone was a Christian thinker doesn't mean that they're a father of the church. You think Oregon and Tertullian had no influence? Of course they had influence, but that doesn't make them a father of the church. I'm not saying it does. I'm just there saying, we go. I'm just saying we can't dismiss them as unimportant. I'm not dismissing. I love Origin. Okay, I've great. got his book, yeah, yeah, First great. Principle. I read it. Yeah, yeah, great, like, great, great. I, I don't think he could be declared as a heretic, but I don't think he's a church father because he gets too many things wrong. Okay, that's fair enough. And that is the Christian position, bro. Well, when I'm in, you... my point is, if, if these are some of the reasons, mm -hmm. honestly, Luke, if these are some of the reasons why you've rejected Christianity, then you have that's missed, you, you've thought your way out of Christianity wrongly. So what are your reasons? Oh, well, for me, I just don't see through logical deduction the Trinity. I, can, I understand how Aquinas explains it, but all his arguments for God don't conclude in a three hypostasis with the essence. Right, I, I, I just would present it to you as a brute fact. No, I don't believe that. Right. So I think that, well, well firstly, I, 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 explain to me what is your objection. Let me tell you what my ob what I interpretation of the Trinity is, yeah, and then and then you respond you, to you it. Do you hold to the like, Thomist view? Uh, well, no, I'll just explain my right, position. Go on, go on. There's one essence. Yeah. There's three hypostases. Yeah. In the thing that they are, they're one. Yeah. In the in who they are, they are three. Yeah, I know, I know, I know the whole. Right. I, I know the whole. So, that is do you, Aquinas let, 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 yeah. well, 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 no, I, I, I'm not agreeing to anything and everything that Aquinas says. I'm no, not putting not, myself in that box. Not everything. So, respond that. to what I say and tell me why there's a problem there. Oh no, I'm not saying there's a problem. Like I said, when we when we logically deduce God's well, go existence, on then. right? Yeah. Through the Diente, maybe I'm sure you're familiar with the Diente. The Diente even itself doesn't conclude that there are three hypostases. I'm not. I, I'm not familiar with the Latin. I might be familiar with the concept, but uh, what? The Diente is the existence essence distinction. You know the the formal cause. So the formal cause is the formal cause. The right. Essence is sustained and gets its existence from outside itself. Yeah. Therefore, there is a per se series. Therefore, a rest and necessary existence, and the necessary existence is essence and existence are one and the same, and therefore divine and simple. Right. So let, let me let, let let me just deal with it uh, in a different way. There's one, there is the essay, which is the father, yeah, yeah. but the father is always the father. Yeah. If you're the father, what is required? That you have a son. There you go. So now we've established the son, logically. If the son, if the father has always existed, as the father. Let me ask you your father, not my father. Right, but, but at this point, you're trying to say that, it, that the Trinity is not internally. Uh, uh, internally consistent. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I don't see. Oh, from rational argumentation, we go from. Well, deal with my rational argument. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not signing. Uh, I'm not signing up to Aquinas. Just deal with me. No, I'm saying I know how the whole the whole hypothesis. Right. Well, let's think it through then. Well, well, let's think it through then. Together, let's think it through then. Right. So, if there is a singular essay, a soul essay, soul being, yeah, that is Father. What logically has to follow? I mean, I don't have to believe he's a father. No, I'm um, talking. You're saying that Christianity. Is not logically consistent. So no, we're just no, talking no. within Christian no, paradigm. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying there's a logical flaw. I'm saying that when we reason to God, we don't come to the conclusion of three hypostases. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's illogical. I understand how it works when right. we have a system for it. Yeah. 
I'm not, I'm not one of these Muslims who says, oh, well, the Trinity is so illogical. How can you? I don't believe that. That's, okay. that's silly. That's Fair enough. Silly. And I appreciate you're willing yeah, to the admit Trinity that. Is three you're much closer essence. to the truth then. Yeah, three habits, essence, one essence. The essence is God and identity. So you, that, that makes sense. Yeah, that's all fine. I'm rationally saying, consistent. It's rationally consistent. I Thank you very much. I to that conclusion Okay, myself. fine. So now let me, let me count then. Go ahead. Your Quran claims to be from Allah. Your Quran claims to be free from errors and your Quran gets the Trinity wrong. Ergo, the Quran is not from Allah. You should reject Actually, well, Islam and you need to pick up your Bible and well, start studying you're gonna it. you're going to say it's because they say about Mary, but the thing about it I is... I didn't say that. Well, what's the word you they shouldn't gonna... assume. Well, okay, my bad, my bad, go on. All right, shall we go through the passage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So in Surah 5, 73, says this. 